What's up, everybody? Welcome to Kind of Funny Games Daily for Thursday, January 16th, 2020. I'm one of your hosts, Greg Miller, alongside the best hair in the business, Fran Mirabella III. Good morning, Greg. How you doing? Good morning, everybody. I'm good. Yeah. I'm good. Cold You're good. and wet. It's raining here in San Francisco. Whatever. Luckily, we're okay. Yeah. But I know what everyone in the audience <laughs> is thinking. What? Where is Blessing? This is supposed to be Blessing. Oh, yes. Blessing. I have bad news, everybody. Blessing has been admitted to the hospital with the same thing that struck Padme. A broken heart. No! <laughs> I was like, what? The Smash Brothers Direct today broke this young boy's heart. He's lost he's, the will He's going to back live. to bed. He's lost the will to live. He's in there. All sorts of robots are on him, blowing on him. I don't know what the hell they're doing, but they're trying to keep him alive. And Now, Blessing's okay. He came in uh, today with Tim to do the Smash Brothers Direct, which we will talk about in a bit. And you definitely need to watch their live reaction, oh, too. So good. Oh, my God. It's the best piece of comedy of 2020. But to do that, I came in to do this for him. Remember, he'll be back this afternoon uh, hosting uh, that there Dragon Ball. Ball. Kaka. Kakarot. Kaka. Kakarot. Kakarot. I, I asked Blessing, I was like, oh, when do you meet Kakarot in the uh, in the game? And he was like, you do know that's a nickname for, uh, I, I forget, like Goku or Gohan or something like You're that. Like, oh, I'll talk to you about Batman later. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he'll like, be back uh, this afternoon with that and doing that stuff. I thought it was a sexually transmitted disease. Kakarot? <laughs> it does sound like it, right? Yeah, it does sound yeah. like gross. Uh, Fran, how are you doing? I'm doing all right, man. How's uh, that twitch.tv slash fm3 underscore life? I was playing... More Plague Tale last night. Mm. So we got into a bit of that. I still want to beat that. Um, I jumped over a ledge, though, and it has these checkpoints. Yeah. And I was actually just showing people on my stream, like, oh, you can make different choices. And I jumped over, and I legit had to, like, reset a half hour backwards. <sighs> anyway. That's never it's going fun. well. That's never yeah. good. All right. Great to be about... back. Thanks for yeah, having Yeah, no, me. it's been a while since you've been on the show, right? Yeah. And actually, I think it could have even been with you last time. It's funny. Across all of last year. Yeah. Was on KFGD a lot, but not a ton with you sometimes. Always great to see you, man. Back to do it again. I'm glad right. Blessing is in the hospital with a broken heart because wow. of Zachariah. Uh, today we're going to talk about Cyberpunk Delayed. Smash, disappointing, Fran, beautiful. Because this is Kind of Funny Games Daily. Each and every weekday on a variety of platforms, we run you through the nerdy video game news you need to know about. If you like that, be part of the show over at patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames. You can give us your questions, comments, concerns, and you can get the show ad-free. The show with an exclusive post show. The show... Just awesome. It's just the best way to get the show over there. Uh, if you don't want to give us any money, though, no big deal. You can head over to YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny Games. Well, I skipped some other stuff. I'm rusty. Uh, you go to Patreon.com. Or no, you go to RoosterTeeth.com. You got podcast services around the globe. Remember, if you're watching live on Twitch.tv slash Kind of Funny Games, you have a special job. Go to KindofFunny.com slash you're wrong. Tell us what we screw up as we screw it up so we can set the record straight for everybody watching on the places I just said dot dot. Do that again. Uh, remember, housekeeping. This afternoon, the boys are streaming Dragon Ball 2 p.m. Uh, Pacific time. That's on Twitch.tv slash Kind of Funny Games. Remember, as part of Kind of Funny 2020 and Kind of Funny Games 4.0, we're trying to stream at least once a week. Usually, that'll mean Thursday afternoons, usually in the 2 p.m. slot. That is subject to change because of embargoes and a million different things. We will try to keep you uh, abreast of the situation. Then I think this is going to be the first one they try to put up as a podcast. They're trying to do this with, uh, hey, let's let's talk oh. about the game as we go. Like So it's not just sitting That's there playing. That's challenging. It is. So if they actually end up doing that, I know I'm, I'm supposed to give off the sign off on it. Let them know what they think of that. It'll be on the Gamescast feed. Barrett, you got anything to add to that? No. You're, Barrett, what I, I mean, I love a lot of things about Barrett. But one of the things I love about Barrett is he's an intent listener. Like, Kevin's over there, he'd already be asleep. Yeah. But he Barris is. over there eating a bagel, like, looking at me, and then he'll put it down and, like, and look at me, and I'm like, has he got something to say? And he's like, no, no I'm man, just listening. I'm just listening. Yeah. That's my boy over there. I love That's you. my sad boy. <laughs> love you, too. Uh, thank you to our Patreon producers, Blackjack and Mohammed Mohammed. Remember, it is January. We are still fundraising for the rest of 2020. We have a new studio, new employee, and new shows. Head over to patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames. Uh, every new donation and every increased donation, of course, gets your name on the new studio wall. Plus, there's a whole fundraiser uh, thermometer thing we're doing, trying to do a basketball game that will end badly for all of us. That's still happening. Uh, 75, huh? that's what's happening. And then at 100, go to Pittsburgh. See Steve from April gamers see the makuga family do a world tour meet and greet at josh's uncle's bar <laughs> why not how could you not uh remember the final stream the 12 hour stream we owe you is going to be january 31st you can hear more about that uh, later. Wh uh what uh where on the thermometer is uh we it's all go to japan that is going to be i think we said yesterday that's at two hundred thousand. so oh, okay, we got okay. some work to do to get us there uh gary widow though picking up all the first class tickets i missed this japan thing but i was tagged in it's, chat it's, it's just don't let gary widow on your shows because okay. over time, he just erodes them. and you get, Right. You get, you know, it's God. toxic, right? It is. He is yeah. a toxic individual. He's the toxic. He is. When you look up toxic masculinity, you see Gary Widow. That's what <laughs> oh, you wow. see. You know what I mean? Wow. Uh, thank you. Today, we're brought to you by Upstart Hymns and Quip, but I'll tell you about that later for now. 
Let's begin the show with what is and forever will be the Roper Report. <laughs> Time for some news. Hey, look at that. Harmony, I like it. Yeah. Five items on the Roper Report. A picker's <laughs> dozen. Dozen. The first one. Ooh, and an echo, too. Good job, Fran. Uh, <laughs> sad news. Cyberpunk 2077 Duh. has been delayed. Uh, CD Projekt Red put out the following image in a tweet. That was just a letter. It's very yellow. We have important news regarding Cyberpunk 2077's release date we'd like to share with you today. Cyberpunk 2077 won't make the April release window, and we're moving the launch date to September 17th, 2020. We are currently at a stage where the game is complete and playable, but there's still work to be done. Night City is massive, full of stories, content, and places to visit. But due to the sheer scale and complexity of it all, we need more time to finish playtesting, fixing, and polishing. We want Cyberpunk 2077 to be our crowning achievement for this generation, and postponing launch will give us the precious months we need to make the game perfect. Except, I'm sorry, expect more regular updates on progress as we get closer to the new release date. We are really looking forward to seeing you in Night City. Thank you for our on your ongoing support. Fran, obviously sad, <laughs> but yes. it's the same thing we always say, right? Delay, delay. Go ahead and delay. We want the game to be as great as possible. Yeah. Don't rush it out. Yeah, I feel like games of this caliber do get a free pass. I mean, what can you say? Like, it's already been in development forever. We're super excited. Uh, we just want it, and that's probably our only real complaint. 100%. Other than it, it also does push it into like a super busy season no doubt we got a ton of launch you know systems launching and all the above well that's the question right when you look at september now and i'm pushing far ahead now and granted you know the deeper you get into the year more question marks appear on the calendar pushing into it right looking at it right now you have the newly delayed marvel's avengers uh mm -hmm. popping on the fourth september yeah. 4th then yeah two weeks later on the 17th you have cyberpunk 2077 yeah. it and is then, true yeah the right. question mark of where is next gen yeah right now although yes to be fair in september sometimes you have a little bit of time us destiny players however here we go usually we get a september release this year it was october 1st uh if it sticks to that schedule that maybe it'll work out but it's funny how we selfishly like so that was the first thing when i heard this right because final fantasy 7 remake just yep. got pushed from um uh, into April 20th from right. March. Yeah. And that was right up against Cyberpunk. And I was like, no. April 10th, right? Oh, sorry. April 10th, correct. Yeah. I have a calendar in front of me. I'm cheating. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, but still, I, I should have known. We just talked about it yesterday on Gamescast. Um, but anyway, I was like, selfishly, I was like, oh, yes. Like, Final Fantasy VII, we got some time for that. I mean, worth noting that <laughs> the end of March, beginning of April is still a clusterfuck. Uh, you have end of March on the 31st, Persona 5 Royal. Uh, yeah, then why not? We got more time for it, though, now. Well, do you really? Because then April 3rd, Resident Evil 3. Yeah. Then yeah, April 10th, Resi or Final Fantasy 7. Then what I call console killer on the 24th, Predator, Predator? Hunting Grounds. Yeah. Don't, right. I feel like all that's, that's going to be me. <laughs> <laughs> the only I'll have I arms sound. doing stuff, oh, too, okay, but I'll cool. do the Predator mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I only have two game, uh, games I care about around that time then. I've heard three, I guess. I got Doom. Yeah. I got Persona 5 uh, Royal. And then uh, Final Fantasy 7. You'll be dealing with Doom. Doom coming out March 20th. You'll be yeah. fucking crush that. Of yeah. course, you'll be hooked on Animal Crossing, as I keep telling you. <laughs> no. You're going to get into it with me? Nope. I mean, March also, like crazy, like we're saying, right? 11th, Ori, Will of the Wisps. Uh, 13th, Neo 2. 20th, Animal Crossing and Doom Eternal. 24th, Bleeding Edge. And then, yeah, like I said, oh, well, then 31st, Persona 5 Royal. Yeah, there's a lot going on. I mean, it still gives you a couple weeks to handle some of those. But, like, Cyberpunk is, along with, I'd say, FF7 Remake for many, like, oh, must sure. play. Oh, so sure. Yeah, totally. To get those apart, I was selfishly like, okay. Like, I feel good about this. But then, yeah, I started thinking. I was like, oh, it's just going to get worse and worse. And yeah. And there's events. And, like, TwitchCon is normally around then. And uh, I'm trying to think if there's any other events in September. But it, it, it'll pile up really fast. There's never a good time when there's this much good stuff out there. But all I can say is to see them right. You know, at this stage of development, you know, confidently we want this to be our crowning achievement. Uh, yeah, like that's that that's enough to get me excited. I was uh, like more excited, I should say. I was already super excited, but for them to say of this generation, we want this to be a crowning achievement. I'm like, I hope so. Lucid Dream writes in to patreoncom slash games, just like you can to be part of the show, and says, "Do you think CD Projekt Red is delaying Cyberpunk to avoid extreme crunch, or do you think they're already crunching and this delay will only extend it?" Hard to say. We're not on the inside of that wall, right? I would imagine I, you've already been crunching. Yeah, I feel like... Because it, it's not like... I mean, you at some point, no. The, the, whenever a delay gets announced, it means like last week they passed the point of no return. Where they were like, we got to make a call now. Are we doing this or not doing this? Yeah. 
And so they would have been pushing to get to that point to try to see if they exactly. can actually not do anything with it. Yeah, like if they need <laughs> this many more months, obviously they've already been like crunching and working super hard. I think the word crunch also, it's become a very dirty word because it's very, it's, it, it paints a broad it, brush and it has yeah, a negative stroke for sure. It, it can be associated with work abuse. But let's bear in mind, like in some cases, there's many people that are like, no, like this is this is my art. You know, yep. I'm coming in and working on this stuff maybe freely and they're putting stuff in the game. I don't know this, but I'm just speculating. 100%. This seems like a company that has figured out how to make pretty massive games. Um, and I don't remember hearing any reports that, uh, you know, the workers there were in this situation. So, yeah, I mean... It could be the... the the crunch that isn't the crunch you get reported that's what I was, on. Not the yeah. mandated be here, we're not feeding exactly. you, you never see your family crunch as much as like, I want this to be as best as possible. I'm working till midnight every night. Exactly. And I maybe won't come in earlier, won't do this or yeah. whatever. Meaning I think they've been crunching for years on this game, <laughs> yeah. in other words. And like, I'm sure they're super excited to get it right and that's why they want the delay. But hopefully, yeah, I would I would hope this isn't some negative. So Franimal, thing. with that pushback, mm -hmm. looking down the barrel of the next few months, what's your most anticipated game? Because the things so, I I'll, I can give you a list if you want. When I had seeing, ours from yesterday. Right, um, of course. If you, Gamescast is live right now, and it is us doing this cool uh, betting game among each other of Medicare critic scores. Yeah. Tim's rules make no sense and fuck us over, but who cares? Yeah, he screws us out. I right, appreciate of the like show. the first comment I saw on YouTube was like, "This Tim's system is dumb. It's going to end one zero zero zero." I'm like, "Yep, probably." I mean, are we are we going through E three? No, I don't think yeah. that far. I mean, because for me, it's like it's January. Easy. These are the things I've marked on my calendar. January uh, 17th, Tokyo Mirage Sessions. Uh, 23rd, Kingdom Hearts is on there. That's not for me, but more for paying attention. Uh, February 14th, Darksiders, Genesis, and Dreams. Uh, no, uh, uh, February 18th, I got Banned and Vanquish. Uh, mm -hmm. Iron Man VR on the 28th of February. Um, and then, like we said, March, Ori Will the Wisps on the 11th. Neo 2 on the 13th. Uh, 20th is Animal Crossing and Doom Eternal. I'm expanding. You know, you only see so many things. I can be, I'm probably skipping some things. Uh, number 24, or number 24, March 24, bleeding edge. <laughs> Almost number 24 right. at this point, Greg. Uh, 31st, Persona 5 Royal. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, April 3rd, like we said, Resident Evil 3. Uh, April 10th, Final Fantasy 7 Remake. April 24th, Predator Hunting Just Grounds. Just choosing all the games, Greg. Like, you can't be excited. No, mean, no, no. That was are. me listing them for, like, oh, okay. somebody's driving These their car, notable. whistling Dixie, just having a great gotcha. time. I want to make sure they understand what's on the plate here Unders for the, the Gotcha. First Those four were, months. like, the ones that you're choosing yeah. from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. thought you were saying that's your list of what I'm so excited, excited for which, course, all these games. Yeah. No, not well, really. Remind me, by the way, with Persona 5 Royale. Yeah. and Because I've still Ro want, been Royal. Right. Royal. Royal. It's not Sorry. Royale. I, no, Royal. I, it's very My bad. I, it's confusing because we're all dumb. I know. Yeah, that's basically it. <laughs> I just got it wrong. Uh, what is the difference again with that? Is it additional content on top of five? Yo, what's up, Fran? Uh, from what I understand, they're adding like another, character, like, right? uh, there's a couple of new characters. There's like one, like, major new oh, yeah, character. Oh, yeah, sort of like special edition. Yeah, Some and they're adding like all the stuff. Five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you haven't I, played it, yeah. this is. From what I probably the one from in. what I understand, there's at least another palace, I think, and there's like another semester like story, I think, that's going on. So yeah, it's essentially like if they had like a season pass, but then Right. It's yeah, like they put it all Persona into five one with the DLC quote unquote right. sort of concept. But yeah. um cool. Yeah, I never got to play it. I've always wanted to, but I don't know how I'm gonna find time amongst all this stuff. I mean, my short list, Greg, is pretty simple. Uh, just Half Life Alex, and I don't have the setup or the space, but I'm figuring it Do out. Do we have a date on that? We don't. We know it's March. Oh, okay. But That's this is one here. that I continue to think in the same way. I was, yeah, when I was streaming last night, I was up to find the quote. I was like, I don't know about that cyberpunk if it's going to make it. I, I think I jinxed us, everybody. But I wake up and got that news. But I feel that way about Half Life. But I feel Life. like you're, just, you know, at this point, you could say that about pretty much any of these you, things. Any big game that is AAA and has basically the, the wherewithal, they, they can be like, yeah, I'll just move it because, like, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Well, the wherewithal. <laughs> this game's like you haven't heard about You're going right? to uh, cancel your pre-order because, the, you know. Dreams, I'm 100% confident in. Darksiders, I'm 100% confident in. Bayonetta Remake, 100% confident in. Yeah, Marvel Iron those. Man, I talked about this recently. Like, why haven't we seen more than just that one demo? Not confident in that. I can see that put moving. Again, yeah. do your thing. Will of the Wisps, confident. Neo, confident. Yep. Animal Crossing, confident. Doom, confident. Bleeding Edge, I can see moving. Animal Crossing, confident? I'm fairly confident, but you never know. In the t I guess True. they would have probably I feel like you would have said something already, by now, right? Especially yeah, yeah, yeah. with Directs, but um, I do get worried about that one just for whatever reason. Um, but yeah, look, my short list is it's Half-Life Alex, it's Final Fantasy VII Remake, and Resident Evil 3. I think it is as simple as that, but I would... Actually, no, I take that back. And I'm super excited for Ori. Um, in the lead up to all those. Now so you want to make it interesting. Games. Yeah. Do you think Alex will get delayed? I know. 
we're taking bets now. It's another dollar. You know, the, yeah, I know. We have the dollar hidden, hidden vault. away in the, in the case. Because over it, guys, it's January. We're like, what, halfway through January? And it's just March. And it's also, it'll be at the Game Awards. The last and, second, we're not at the Game Awards. Bye. Yeah, and yeah. Huh. Uh, huh. is one of our stories today about the index? No, it should okay. be. Okay. Um, well, there, yeah. The, maybe it was yesterday. Sorry. Yeah, I they, think it they talked about up. index yesterday. That's what it was. But uh, pre-orders, uh, sorry, not pre-orders, but they're selling out, you know. And, and one of the comments, I believe, from Valve was like, we were working to make sure that our hardware is in stock before our biggest game, you know, mm -hmm. is out. I'm like, that's interesting language. They were like, they felt like it would be before, you know, yeah, out yeah. came out. But still, the fact that it's cutting it that close with the hardware, like, it's hard for me to believe that if, if it's not in stock that they would want to put Alex out there. Yeah, so they need to have no way. Yeah, yeah, and maybe yeah. that's what's going into this asterisk. This is they're like, you know, we need to make sure that we have enough sort of systems produced to meet demand. Yeah, you're so. right. Here's the report yesterday from Hayden Taylor on Games Industry Up is, as the March release date of Half-Life Alex looms, the Valve Index virtual reality headset is currently sold out in every region except Japan. That's according to data from Road to VR, which found that Valve's high-end headset is out of stock in 30 of 31 regions. Yeah. Quote, we are working hard to build more units and meet the high demand, a Valve spokesperson told Road to VR. We are targeting to be back in stock before Half-Life Alex ships. Valve revealed the next entry in the popular thing. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, it's just cutting it close. So I do think there's a chance. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I'm doing a hard bet here, Greg? No. I just think, like, in terms of the things we're I, talking about, and especially with delays, I think the fact that, like, exactly what Barrett said, that we don't have a real release date. Mm -hmm. We're already into January. We're talking about March. And yeah. the fact they didn't show up at Game Awards. And it's like, ooh. Exactly. I will put, I'll say, you know, I feel like it's going to get pushed past March. Now, whether that's just April or May, you know, we'll see. But I feel like it's going to get pushed out a bit. Although maybe... In terms of quarterly financials, sometimes it's like they got to meet that. But anyway, uh, bummed a bit, I guess, that Cyberpunk's pushed out. But I don't mind, especially if uh, – it, is it confirmed for, like, PlayStation 5? Or, oh, I guess no. we don't know uh, yet. Not to my knowledge. We don't did really they, know they, yet. Did they say, have you heard anything about that? They didn't say anything about – For – Cyberpunk, next, did like, they haven't said anything? Like, yeah, yeah no, we don't right. know. Next gen. But again so, – you can play it on your PS5 because... Cross sure, but everyone wants, you know, yeah, the crazy bells and whistles. Yeah. Whatever, I'll just play it on the PC, buddy. Mm. Uh, <laughs> the other... I, I was lo I was looking it up. Uh, the other added thing for Persona 5 Royal, if you're really interested, Fran, is that there's actual PS4 Pro support. Oh, huh? that's really dope. Because, yeah, the original like one... them graphics? The original one was, like, made for PS3, and it came out for PS3 and PS4, huh. so they didn't really have, like, 4K stuff or HDR. Or gotcha. Anything. So that's very exciting. But what I was going to say is if it puts it... It's still probably farther out than I would want to wait, but let's say this, you know, <laughs> the systems will probably launch in November, right? Yeah. Um, Assumingly. Or so in October. you could wait a few months if there is going to be next-gen versions of this and play it on that, depending on your schedule. So I kind of like that, meaning versus the – at least you're presented with that option. Where right now, if it came out in April, like, you're not going to wait all year to play it. But you might be in a position later this year if it comes to next-gen. So anyway. For me. That's the that's the other side of the, the, the sword. The games I see the closest that I'm excited for, I won't go super deep. I'll just go into yeah, February. For me, three or four. Dreams. Yeah. I'm, I'm interested in what Media Molecule I'm does. I'm interested in, in getting into the creator stuff. And then uh, Iron Man VR, both February. And yeah. then Animal Crossing. But I feel like March is still so far away. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I hope I haven't got to play Dreams yet. And I'm hoping it could be a cool stream game, like mm -hmm. checking out mm -hmm. all this different stuff that yeah. hopefully is well curated and who knows. And, you know, sometimes you see games like that, like pop, like Mario Maker really popped. So not just be for the business side of it. I am genuinely interested in dreams. I just haven't had my hands on it, so it's sure. hard for me to to be excited about it. And when you see trailers, it's just like it's all this different stuff that people created. So I you know, I haven't I think once I get my hands on it, I'll have a different I, I've been impression. waiting for the final version of Dreams. You know what I mean? I know how yeah. impressive the creation suite is. I watch videos. Blessings been, did a thing on PS I Love You this mm. week of like here's some stuff I've been playing that I think is awesome. I'm excited. To, I want to be. I want to enter Dreams as a full product, the trophy list, and I want it to be like how Little Big Planet was for me. Of play through <laughs> all the media molecule stuff, then venture into the other stuff. Right. What inspires me to create something off of that? Now knowing what this thing can do and seeing what other people have done. Platinums inspire you, Greg. One hundred percent. I do we'll, want to. That's I do, what I am, will get you. I am to pretty create. stoked about the platinum. Man. Let's see create what they got. Ten original me. thing that should be a platinum because you will do I it do. all. Dude, get great that was the best thing anything. about Little Big Planet when you'd make the level that would get. And we there were so many levels that were just like play this, get four trophies, <laughs> and you'd like fall down a cylinder and things would just fall on you and be bing bing. What if it comes with no platinum, Greg? Don't do that to me. <laughs> what Don't if do the, that. What if it, what Dude, if it doesn't I'll tell you, man. I right? it's like first party. I, I feel I feel for everybody. I'm playing that uh, uh that VR game. Shit. 
Um, I want to say Expanse. That's not it. It's the one from PlayStation VR. It's the uh, or from PS Eleven this week. You walk around, Fran. You scan stuff and you walk around. It's not. It's not a popular one. I I almost have it. Shit. Everybody, hold on. We're going to my trophies. PSN profiles. Game over. See what trophies get you to do, man. No, I'm playing it for. uh, We were picking. Me and Blessing pick one PSN game a week. And go play it. Can't right. be something you're gonna play before. Right, right, Eclipse. Right. Eclipse. Sorry. Eclipse. Oh. And I was like, I went in and looked at the trophies, and I was like, oh shit! Like the game's not broken or anything, so it's not like I'm playing it as a cheese thing, and I'm doing it right. for this part of the trophy, the show. But I looked through, it, I'm like, oh man, you just all they are is complete act one, two, three, four, five. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, wait, it came back no platinum. I'm like, what the Damn, fuck, Greg. guys? What the <laughs> fuck, guys? <laughs> Damn. How many times do I have to say this on podcasts? You go to PlayStation. You're an independent developer, you, or any developer. Hey, here's our trophy list. We want a platinum. Sorry, your game doesn't get a platinum because of X, Y, or Z. You respond back, we really want a platinum. And they go, okay. That's how it goes. <laughs> I've been told that is how it goes. Don't allow to be pushed around. I'm paying for Eclipse, right? Fucking hell. Give Greg his platinums. I digress. Number two on the Roper Report. Let's talk about all this Smash Brothers DLC. Again, there is a reaction. Fresh off the press. Live thing. from Blessing and Tim on YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny Games. And it's some of the funniest shit you'll ever see. But I'll read Nintendo's statement first. Combat class is in session. Blythe, the renowned mercenary and professor from the Fire Emblem series, is ready to teach Super Smash Bros. Ultimate players a lesson in battle. In a video released today by Masahiro Sakurai, uh, the director of Super Smash Bros., Ultimate unveiled uh, for the first time uh, the battle-hardened Fire Emblem character in action, uh, who will enter the arena on January 28th as the game's newest fighter. Sakurai uh, demonstrated Blythe's unique ranged play style and revealed the Garen Garreg Garreg Mac Monaster. Mac Monaster. Monaster. Byleth, by the way. I don't want you to get no. It's Blythe. No, it's Byleth, isn't it? Is it? Yeah. No. It is. Really? It is. We're making it this hard to say these fucking names. I'm sorry. I know it's. They even joke about. Never mind. I was gonna say they they joked about Fire Emblem being hard to pronounce, but this this name's a little tricky to pronounce, maybe in. Japanese. You're right, because I guess the L would have to be Bi- before it. It would be bull. For, this is a banana nut muffin. Byleth? Anyway, it is, it is Byleth. Oh, man. But just in God, case. I thought I had that one down pat, you know? Because you got to say it more, I think. God it damn it, Byleth. Anyway, so it's got the monastery. And 11 new music tracks from the Fire Emblem series, all coming to Super Smash Bros. Ultimate game on Nintendo Switch system later this month. Uh, all of the new content will be available to players who own Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Fighters Pass or purchase Challenger Pack 5 separately. In addition to Byleth's reveal, uh, new details were announced about the Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Fighters Pass Volume 2, which will include six more fighters currently under development. By purchasing Fighter Pass Volume Two for a suggested retail pl- price of twenty nine ninety nine, players will get access to six more yet to be announced challenger packs as they release. Each pack includes one new fighter, one stage, and multiple music tracks. For those who purchase Fighter Pass or Fighters Pass Volume Two, will also receive an exclusive costume for the Mii Sword Fighter, the ancient soldier gear from the Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild game, available in game starting January twenty eighth. Byleth's accompanying stage, the Gareg, Gareg, it's like my name, but it's not, Gareg, <laughs> Mach- called Monastery, the Greg Monastery, the Greg Monastery. <laughs> uh, also features a variety of cameos from popular characters in the Fire Emblem series, including uh, Adele Guard from Black Eagles, Claude from the Golden Deer, and Dimitri from the Blue Lions. Nailed it. Uh, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate will also receive a new spirit board, which features some of the other Here popular characters Tim. from <laughs> exactly Fire Emblem series, along with a new classic mode, Root uh, Heroic Legacy, which highlights classic Fire Emblem stages throughout the series' storied history. Additionally, new Mii Fighter costumes inspired by Cuphead, Rabbids, Altair, and various Mega Man games Cuphead will... Cuphead deserved more than that. Will be available for purchase on January 28th. Players who purchase the Cuphead Me figure costume will also receive a new music track, Floral Fury, uh, which was originally re- featured in the game's classic Cagney Carnation boss battle. Finally, two player, uh, two fighters from Smash Brothers Ultimate will have amiibo figures available for purchase at select retailers beginning January 17th. Samus's mysterious doppelganger, Dark Samus, and Simon Belmont's whip-wielding Echo Fighter, Richter. Additional new fighters, stages, and music will be coming to Super Smash Bros. Ultimate through the Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Fighters Pass Volume 2. Players can also continue to purchase the current fighters for a suggested retail price of $24.99 to gain access to the first five challenger packs. Playable fighters include Joker, Hero, Banjo and Kazooie, and Terry Bogard. All are available now with Byleth joining on the January 28th for only $5.99. Players can purchase the packs individually. Whew. 
Yeah, man. Now imagine waking up at five in the fucking morning to come in here and see another fire animal person. This is what I'm talking about. I'm not even doing it because we made the content. Go to youtube.com slash kind of funny games. Watch the reaction. Because just watch them. They're like literally when Zachariah's like, or Sakurai's like, hey, we nobody at Nintendo knows about this. I know very few people know. And, and Tim and Blessing are both like, oh, oh, what could it be? oh, here we go. It's going to be worth it. And like yesterday, last night, Blessing was so much like, I'm hyped. I can't he wait to come pumped. in and do this. I'm excited. Yeah, no, I'm and then so you green. see them fucking <laughs> crash and burn because yeah. it's more fire. I know. I know. Like the, the, and this is like the weird thing where, um, like, I, I, I watch their live reacts, and the, this is more just commentary on uh, less about them, but more on the reveal itself. It's just, all right, so you're. You're saying these things on purpose to get people hyped up of like, all right, not many people at Nintendo know about this. Uh, the character's going to take a little bit to come out because the people who need to work on it don't know yet and all that stuff. Um, and then it's a Fire Emblem character. And it's just like, why does no one at Nintendo know about this? Because Fire Emblem Three Houses is a Nintendo exclusive game. Like, why yeah. was that so close to the chest where it was just like, I, it just feels weird. It just feels I weird. I think it was kind of hyperbole. Like, it wasn't really, you know, uh, yeah. it wasn't the real day. They, they just something that they were saying. Yeah. Uh, uh, <clears throat> I would agree there's a lot of Fire Emblem stuff happening, obviously. In Smash, you've got a lot of levels and a lot of music. But they are all pretty awesome. Uh, I really like the look of the new move set on Byleth. Um, has like this these different ranged weapons. Um, also, I, I quickly was paging through it. I saw it has like a down special where so Captain Funk, uh, Captain Falcon, Captain Funk, Captain Funk's punch, <laughs> Captain Falcon's <laughs> punch is notorious in Smash Brothers. <laughs> and uh, anyway, Falcon it, it, punch. it, it can completely destroy people when it connects. But this has like a special that can actually shield up. To um, to combat that, which I was I was impressed by that. I don't know if any of the other mini characters already have something like that. I haven't kept up, but I think the move set looks good. I think the the level looks good. But just to finish it, meaning Fire Emblem fans and Smash fans, I think it's still a good addition for them, obviously. But I'm with everybody else. Which I woke up and saw they added like a Cuphead me costume and, yeah, and uh, i literally thought it was cuphead when i woke up and i was like let's go i w that was one that i was like saying i would yeah. love to see it and, and it, it's just a fucking more costume. fire emblem. and like <laughs> I, I i'm not disappointed that like it wasn't cuphead this time or like Cup but like the fact that cuphead is now just a costume similar to sands from uh yeah, that undertale much puts a, that means he won't ever he, be, he won't be one of the next six that are now mysterious it's just like all right well fuck okay Again, yeah. that's why I say he deserves more. I wanted uh, Sam Porter character. Bridges as well. Oh, so, we! Oh, that would be good. Happen. Come on now. Good. Just get some beats. You in there. Put everybody to sleep. Yeah, yeah, super. Yeah. Uh, I asked Blessing, uh, who was still awake, even though I told him to go home and go to sleep, to give me his summation. He said this. Another Fire Emblem character is disappointing. Their movesets and fighting style seem cool, but all in all, it's hard to get excited about this. We already had seven characters from that franchise. Yeah. <laughs> why? That said, the new Mii Fighter costumes are awesome, and Season 2 of DLC, including six characters, is an extremely exciting announcement. We will check in and see if those words haunt him at number four <laughs> when another Fire Emblem character is fucking revealed. Yeah, and the, the only thing I will say as well is, uh, yeah, I do feel like they are grinding out a lot now. This was an easy ad. It's good. It's synergistic with Fire Emblems, you know, three houses. So it all makes sense, but I think it was an easy ad. In other words, they've got a lot of assets around Fire Emblem. They've got <laughs> the pipeline already flowing. Like, it wasn't complicated, but it is a bummer as a fan because, like, I want to see a new level around, you know, a whole new, like, look. I want to see a new soundtrack piece, right, that is different than what's already there. I think that's what a lot of the fans want. I mean, you know, when you look at getting away from, like, I like playing Fire Emblem-type characters in the game. Yeah. I just want to see something really wild and new. So I don't even know who that is anymore. Well, I you know, did... I want to bring in some questions. Yeah. Okay. Suck Sandwich wrote in to Patreon.com. Suck kind of, Sandwich? Yeah, kind Ooh. of funny games, just like you can. And says, <laughs> do you think Nintendo has been a little tone deaf when it comes to adding new fighters to Smash Ultimate? I appreciate their dedication to the game and making it a celebration of gaming history that everyone can enjoy, but after this morning's reveal of another Fire Emblem character, I have to ask why. Uh, I feel that there's a missed opportunity for some great characters. Shovel Knight, Bomberman, Springman, and Cuphead come to mind, but they've all been relegated to assist trophies or Mii Fighter costumes. It just seems bizarre to overlook some of these very iconic characters, especially when at least a few of them could have made an four awesome full-blown fighters. Uh, what do you think the strategy is when choosing the DLC characters for the game, and do you think we'll get? who do you think we'll get in Fighter Pass 2? 
Yeah. So I was for me, and again, as everybody bit. knows, I'm not the Smash guy at all. Like I enjoyed it when it launched, and then it fizzled out here kind of quick because we were so busy and crazy. Um, obviously, Tim has every spirit and plays it nonstop. The question I would propose, and kind of funny.com slash you're wrong, is Smash way bigger in Japan than it is here? Yeah, that's the thing. Or just like the question of like it's if it's big, to- tone deaf. I, I I don't know if it is i think for like a western audience yeah. maybe that's what it comes it, off to me be, as. especially with the reveal and you see like you know <laughs> like his announcement he knows that people are excited about this not everybody but he knows that there is a group of people who are going to be really fucking pumped about this yeah um so i don't know if it's tone deaf but i, I and overall like this season looking through it um going through it, like joker hero from uh dragon quest banjo and kazooie i think the only one that felt kind of weird because I, I, another Fire Emblem character does make sense, especially with Three Houses being so big in the last year. Yeah. The only one that felt weird was Terry. Yeah. And that, and that was the only one where I was just like, oh, oh all right. I thought it was a cool crossover, though. I yeah. mean, but th- that, that. that was one where it was just like out of nowhere and like no one even guessed it, you know? Right. Yeah. Um, and, and so, yeah, I don't, I don't feel like this season has been tone deaf. I, yeah. But I feel but, like it's just speaking to a Japanese audience. Yeah. Because even so when why, you, br- I mean, especially Fire Joker. Emblem? Yeah. Especially Hero, yeah. right? Especially now more Fire Emblem. Yeah. I think Banjo was that, oh, man, that's great. That's what people have wanted over here for a long yeah. time. And then Terry, I would assume, is a Japanese language. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, just in general, I'm not a fighting game well, guy. Maybe that's what the hardcore fighter kids want. But it's just, I think you are seeing that push and pull between a game made in Japan and a game that's very popular in the West as well. But yeah. it, I don't know. It strikes me so much as like, like this isn't a great example at all, but it kind of is. Stick with me of like, Peace Walker having Monster Hunter stuff in it, right? Wait, before Monster Hunter World made Monster Hunter even bigger than it already was, where mm-hmm. it was like, yeah, we're making a portable game. This game is huge as a portable game in Japan and in America, but way bigger in Japan. So that you play it and you're like, oh, even if I'm a Metal Gear person and I know nothing of what monster hunting is and cooking my rations or whatever, like, I get why they did this. Right. I get what the audience is for this. Yeah. That's what I assume the audience is here, but I'm not up yeah. to date enough on Smash's yeah. no, worldwide I- footprint. I think you guys are right is that uh, Nintendo very commonly is looking a little inwardly, you know, not that they haven't, you know, looked as broadly. And Fire Emblem Three Houses is doing great. I'm sure it's selling oh, yeah. like hotcakes. So, again, it's synergistic. But interestingly, and I don't know how much data is behind this, I did find a, mm-hmm. an article where somebody back in September of last year had compiled, based on Twitter responses, by region what oh. characters people wanted. And Byleth was number from? five on this list. Is on Nintendo Enthusiast. I'm not huh. familiar with the site. Oh, I know, um, I know Nintendo Enthusiast. Yeah. Yeah, they say the data was based on Twitter responses after DLC character reveals of official Nintendo Twitter accounts. So I think they were crawling through looking responses, for responses yeah, yeah. based on the reveals. Funny to see Byleth was like number five in Japan responses. Funnier to find yeah. out that Byleth's name is Byleth. Yeah. <laughs> or let's just go with Blythe. You just look at that. It looks like Blythe. Am I wrong? Yeah. Um, I went to school with a girl named Blythe in, in high school. Her name looked really? like that. Yeah. Wow. Other She was in drama. <laughs> oh, there are no other. <laughs> don't let our don't let our stupidity distract you. It was from gonna the be actual, such a tangent. I was you like, have such great, I? you actually have like great news. I'm talking about some kid I vaguely knew in high school. <laughs> so I was like, how long is he gonna go? But the other characters they had above Byleth, you know, just again based on some responses that people crawled was um, uh, a monster hunter. Dante was above that. Sora mm-hmm. from uh, yeah, Kingdom Hearts, Kingdom Hearts yeah, was yeah. above that. And then uh, who's Lloyd again? Uh, I recognize the character, but it's not Lloyd. He's uh, you're you know you're the nice like friendly dude who lives nah, down somebody the street. Will, somebody will get it. Uh, but Sora's actually on you know our list over here as well, according to that. And it was so number one in the U.S. was Sora. Number one, I think, in uh, Europe as as well was that Steve from Minecraft as well. Just the Minecraft. Yeah, dude. a lot of people call for him. It was on there. Shantae. It was Shantae. on the U.S. list. Oh, uh, Crash. Up. That's just Boson and Way Forward over there saying that over and over again. So what about yeah? I, I remember us talking about Waluigi a lot. Like, right would now. we have been just as okay with yet another? Dude, if Waluigi would have happened, that, the but, world would have exploded. Right. But also, he wouldn't be in it. Because because he's already a Assist, trophy. Yeah. Uh, he's already a, an assist trophy. So Waluigi is never going to be on that official roster. Can they never break that rule somehow? And I I, uh, I think uh, vaguely understanding the rules in mind of Sakurai, I don't yeah. think he will ever see Waluigi as like a, a main fighter for uh, Smash Brothers. Yeah. Um, and, Did and you say you didn't know who Lloyd was? Yeah, I was like, who's Lloyd? Lloyd is from the main character from Tales of Symphonia. That's what it is, Tales. Oh. Thank you, man of biologist. Thanks, Nano. Uh, as far as like uh, characters for season two or whatever they're they're calling this, like before 
today, I would have said Cuphead. And I would have said Cuphead in like that actual, like the Cuphead mm. art style and all this yeah, stuff. Yeah. That'd um, be amazing. Yeah. Uh, someone someone Not, else was saying uh, in the chat, I forget. Hold who. on, because Gilly Brums writes Ooh. into patreon.com slash kind of funny games and says, What's up, Blessing and Fran? <laughs> Three words. Cuphead in Smash. For a new indie title, I was extremely surprised to see my favorite animated boy appear even as a me costume in today's Smash presentation. For Sans, now Cuphead. It seems like some of the recent indie darlings have been getting some love from Zachari- Sakurai uh, in the form of new me costumes. So my question is, what indie games do you see getting similar treatment in upcoming announcements? With Shovel Knight already in as an assist trophy, uh, the first two that pop into my head are Hollow Knight and Madeline from Celeste. Mm. Also, or I'm sorry, would also mm. love to know your thoughts on these me costume reveals, if time allows. Thanks, Gooly Rooms. I think we already talked about it. You're heartbroken about the costume part, yeah, but yeah. it seemed like you were getting into more games. What do you? Uh, Hollow Knight is a great, a great pick. That that's where my mind went to as yeah. well when you first started. Asking See, I think Celeste question. would be better. I feel like Hollow Knight had already such a legacy by the time it got to Switch. Yeah, that's whereas true. Whereas Celeste was part of, like, yeah, that, the, like, Switch is part of Celeste's story. Yeah. Um, for other like main characters, not even just uh, costume. Someone in the chat was saying um, uh, Travis Touchdown from No More Heroes uh, because yeah. No More Heroes Three is coming yeah. out. Well, I think that's cool. a Switch exclusive. It makes sense. Um, as far as other ones, though, man, I don't know. Yeah, there's like so many, so many options. <laughs> like uh, you're wrong. Also, of course, was quick to point out that Nintendo doesn't have much to do with who Zachary's putting in the game. It's what he wants to put in the game, which he said before and done yeah. before. So it does come down, like we're saying, of. Uh, what speaks to him, I think. Whereas I think mm-hmm. you know, a Minecraft Steve doesn't. <laughs> right, <laughs> you know what right, I mean? Like, right. and I, I, I think they're. I, if, if memory serves right, I thought that he, he there being an interview with him back in the day for this one, which was like Nintendo had input on the first couple or something, and then he was off to do whatever he wanted to do. Yeah, I don't know. That makes sense. Yeah. Ah, uh, and then finally, Fendi writes in patreon.com slash kind of funny games and says good morning guys with the news of byleth uh, and a new fighter pass coming soon the total count of characters in smash will be about 81 characters 83 if you count pokemon trainer as three separate characters my question is what do you guys think is the end goal for this game will they keep doing fighter passes forever will they stop at 100 characters looking forward to your thoughts and have a great day fendi I think it just comes down to sales, man. Um, this has been a newer model for them of selling, like, what are they, five ninety nine or four ninety nine for the fighters? I had the page up. Previously. No, that's what it was. Yeah, yeah five ninety nine, no, no, no. uh, or you, you get, get the, the pass fighter for twenty five. Exactly. Um, so, meaning this is a newer model, and it, clearly it is working very yeah, well. So they're like, good, because that's kind of how this rolled out. We're doing another, you know, uh, fighter expansion, and we've got five more coming now, and so. We don't know when the end will be, but I do think it's honestly a lot about sales. I mean, I'm sure there's a data size in the game at some point that it gets like, wait, this is just getting to be too big for the Switch. But yeah. I don't know that we're really approaching that necessarily. Get your so, memory card. What's that? Just get your little memory card. Put it in there. Exactly. Can't even download so, The Witcher on a base model. Who cares? Yeah. So I, I could see them doing this for, yeah, think about it. Like, let's say we go all the way to 100. That's like a ton of additions. Think of how much time it's going to take us to get there. So it, that'd be years to come, right? So, yeah, yeah. I, I could actually see that happening. Um, at some point, we're going to need a new version of the Switch and upgrade to, to Smash, whatever that means. But um, I, it's funny. People play you know smash so much i haven't heard a lot of commentary on them wanting like you know a new engine and a oh no, they've got no. the model you know and it's it's like it is sort of you know it is an esport to a point or we it talked is. about on the shows before but, with tim and I, I mean i really do feel it's all in the name like super smash brothers ultimate right i feel like they mm-hmm. want this to be the definitive version of this game i don't think you're, you're not gonna get another smash brothers on switch like would you and then when you get to the next one if it is they've done 100 characters i think 100 characters sounds good I, I like that round number. Yeah. And I, th- I think it's, you're 100% correct that they keep announcing them what in packs of five or six or whatever, mm-hmm. right? That way they see if the demand is still there, if they're still making money as they go. Yeah. But if they are, and I think they will be, I don't see why you'd stop doing that. And then when you get to whatever the successor is to the Switch, what, if it, it, either you're rebooting Smash and doing something completely different, or I think you're... just cross-gen. Or you, I, right. well, I don't even go cross-gen. You're just putting out the deluxe version, which I don't even know what you'd add to except new bells and whistles, better online, whatever, right. but it is just like the Switch 2, for lack of a better term. It's the yeah. Switch 2 version of Yeah, Smash. and that's what I meant by that, which is... Oh, uh, yeah, sorry. Maybe you'd have the upgraded, yeah, better-looking version, <clears throat> yeah, yeah. more polished, whatever, and then you could play either one, and yeah, cross-online and all that. But, yeah, I think, you know, my point was, if you're buying these characters, then I think you're going to see more of them as soon as it starts to slow down. <coughs> so, yeah, if Byleth doesn't do it for you, 
then they might they'll respond to that, right? I think that's part of the rollout strategy. I'm sure they know what the next five are, maybe even the next ten in mind, but I'm sure some of that shifts based on, you know, the demand. So they're listening. Uh, Two quick corrections before we move on. Uh, the first one here comes from an antibiologist who says, regarding Mii Fighters costumes not being able to be characters in the game, Isabel was a Mii Fighter costume in 2015 and is now a Smash character. Barry costumes. Flurney, leaning in turn his microphone. Uh, is she a costume or for assist. this game, though? Because in 2015, that would have been for the Wii U Smash Brothers game, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, right. When yeah. Ultimate was just last year. Right? Yeah. No, well, yeah, uh, last year. Yeah, yeah. No, no, it was last year. Remember this? Oh, well, ah, 2018. It was 2018. Yeah, okay, okay. Not okay, last year. Okay, is in okay. 2019, two, like three weeks ago. My question is, it, like, even yeah, though she same, was... Yeah, a good point. Even though she I was a that, me costume You're talking about in this one, game. Okay. Is she a me costume in this game? Like, yeah, I don't think so, over, actually. Yeah. So you make a good yeah, point, which is yeah. they're not doubling up still, so they yeah. are avoiding that. Yeah. I don't know. It still seems to be a silly rule that you could never just figure that out, but... yeah. So if anything, Charles J we'll says get Cuphead in the next Smash iteration in seven years. Yeah. Well, yeah. And, Ch- and Charles J says, since Fighter Pass 2 will last in- last until December 31st, 2021, 100 fighters would likely be a decade off. God. <laughs> we'll wait and see, everybody. Yeah, the pace. Exactly. <laughs> That's a good point. It's way more than... Because it's only been, like, what? Uh, is it... Is it... How many in one year is it? Is it 10 or, or like, five? For characters? <laughs> yeah. Well, what? You it's figured, only like five, right? Well, yeah, Joker, Hero, Banjo, Terry. Yeah. And now, well, I guess, are you counting this is this year? Yes. Th- so, yeah, then the... Uh, yeah, because Joker didn't released get in September. Life. Joker didn't get released until January or something like that, right? Yeah. Or was yeah, that's like right. It's like drop? five a year or so. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. getting to 100 is already crazy, so... I just like the round numbers, guys. You know what I mean? Yeah. I get it, Greg. Nintendo and Smash l- don't listen to me, though. You know that well. I'm on your level. Number three on the Roper Report. Kojima is coming to GDC. Uh, the team at Kojima Productions won, won widespread acclaim last year for their debut game, Death Stranding. And today we're excited to announce that uh, studio founder Hideo Kojima will be at GDC 2020 to deconstruct the design. Uh, this will be a rare opportunity for attendees of the Marsh Conference to hear firsthand about the challenges and triumphs of Death Stranding's development. In a special, special hour-long design track talk on Death Stranding's design philosophy, Kojima will unravel the process through an analysis of the game's concept, theme, storytelling, game mechanics, and development, utilizing the overarching keyword of connection as a framework. GDC 2020 runs from Monday, March 16th through Friday, March 20th here in San Francisco, California. Fran, I was doing some uh, digging the other day on the mm-hmm. GDC schedule. This is going to be the first GDC in years, I think, where I'm actually going to schedule time off here to go down there and see panels. Yeah, there's some cool stuff happening. Yeah, there's for some sure. really good stuff. They got a whole bunch of different uh, Star Wars Jedi panels going on down there. And now this Kajim one, which I won't even try to get into. Yeah. Unless he's unless he's like in the, the you know, you'll have to get the a special pass hall. If you yeah. do it, right? Well, you know, I mean, I'm hoping maybe he'll sneak me in, in a box. You know exactly. what I mean? Exactly. Kajim needs me. <laughs> That's how you should try to get yeah, in. Exactly. Yeah. He'll let you stay if you do that. That's awesome. I'm glad he's getting to come do that. GDC is one of the coolest things I think the video game industry does. E3 gets all the buzz, obviously, mm-hmm. but. And I think pa- and the, what PAX is to consumers, GDC is to developers, where it's like, hey, everybody come here and yep. let's all go to panels that are put on by other developers where the whole goal is to learn from each other. Yeah. Like I, I remember in the old days of IGN, like we'd go there and cover stuff. And I remember being in these things and like my brain oozing out of my ears as people <laughs> try to explain shader systems that meant nothing to me. Yeah. But for the people in that room, they were there because they knew what shaders were and they were trying to figure this out. And like, how did you do this? And blah, 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 blah. yeah, exactly. It really is such a knowledge share. And I mean, everybody wants to go who is, you know, a developer when there's tracks like this happening. And like I noticed, designing the ashtray maze and control is on here yeah. from Annie Marie. Grown roots. Uh, Nailed it. Tried. But uh, there's some really good stuff happening. Absolutely. So yeah. keep your eye on it. And then I hope that we will also get to see some of this. I forget if it, you know, because you have to be there to watch it, right? They're not. They like, do a GDC just, vault, but I, I don't think it's every presentation, if I'm right. Yeah. Th- so over the years, right, it used to be you couldn't access it unless you had a paid, right, subscription yeah, yeah, yeah. or something. I think some of that gets un- changed. Un- and I forget. But in other words, I hope that, you know, we will have the chance as audience to either after we gotta know, get over watch some of it after. Um, plus for all the developers that don't get to make it, you know, yeah. watch this as well. Uh, on that front of GDC, it's worth noting that Day of the Devs GDC submissions are open. Here comes the press release. In March, 
Double Fine Productions and I Am 8-Bit will once again host the Day of the Devs on the GDC show floor and at the Alamo Draft House. The team is hard at work scheduling some of the best unreleased games to feature and today opening up submissions to all developers working on unique and interesting games. Interested developers can submit through Google Form via uh, Double Fine or I Am 8-Bit. All genres and backgrounds are welcome to submit as games and projects of all types will be considered. Since it began in 2013, eight years ago, Day of the Devs, participants set the bar higher and higher, and this year will be no different. Attendees can expect the 2020 class to uphold that tradition. The full lineup, as well as more details on the event, will be announced in February. Uh, another one of those that uh, I adore a GDC period, love this promotion as well, because... Day of the Devs is an event that happens here in the city usually. Uh, well, it happens in a bunch of different places, but the main Day of the Devs, they take over a giant area, and it's just a bunch of indie games there for you to go play. Uh, Day of the Devs GDC is a bit different where there's a section at the actual show, but then one night they go to Alamo Draft House, take over the main theater, and then developers just come up on a scheduled basis and show That's their cool. game on the big screen, and it's awesome. I That's love to really go to cool. that every year or two. So if you are an independent developer and looking, and I know many of you, as I learned, not the hard way, but through doing the showcase, do watch and yeah. pay attention to us, I 1,000% tell you if you have an independent game to go submit that. Again, I am 8-Bit or Double Fine. We'll have the link for you. Number four on the Rope Report, Google Stadia promises at least 10 timed exclusives by July 2020. This is Wesley Yin Pool at Game Info. Or I'm sorry, you're a gamer. Google has promised more than, I'm sorry, 10 Stadia timed exclusives will be released by July 2020, but it failed to name the games. More than 120 games are due to hit Google streaming service in 2020, Google promised. Quote, looking at our upcoming lineup, we are tracking more than 120 games coming to Stadia in 2020 and are targeting more than 10 games in the first half of the year alone that will be only available on Stadia when they launch, Google said in a note to press today. Quote, we are working with our partners to share more on those games soon, end quote. Currently, Stadia has just one timed exclusive, Guilt, from Rhyme developer Tequila Works. Guilt is expected to launch on non-Stadia platforms once the exclusivity period ends. Coming in the next three months, uh, coming in the next three months is support for 4K gaming on the web, further assistant tech functionality when playing on the web, support for additional Android phones and wireless gameplay on the web through the Stadia controller. Yeah, I mean that's interesting to hear that there's already within the next you know six months. There's going to be 10 exclusive uh -huh. Stadia titles. It's hard for me to imagine with the state of Stadia. Yeah. That's my thing is like, hey, man, I wish Believe you the best. Go do it. <laughs> do it. Just do, do it. it. You, do it. You've talked a lot. You talked a lot leading up to the launch of Stadia. It didn't pan out that way. Come to us when you have hard details. Yeah. Where did this story pop from? Uh, uh, Eurogamer. But, I mean, where did they, they get the... Um, they just sent a sure. note sent to but, press. But to your point, what I'm getting at is, like, yeah, what, like... Why did you say Why this? is it a vague thing Why is this right coming now? out right now? Yeah. You know, is it another investor? Hey, like, we've got stuff coming. Or maybe it's just to appease the audience and let them know. But uh, I, good to know. But I'm with you of, like, guys, like, give me one of those titles. Like, we're working with our partners to share more on those games soon. Like, 100% with you, Greg. Don't do this until you've worked with your partners to announce at least like a couple yeah, of them. Just, stop it's, talking. It's too vague because stop yeah. talking to the, you can show it. Yeah. So show don't tell. Yeah. The, the best thing of the story, I forgot that guilt was that exclusive. I, I didn't get a chance to try it yet. Did you? Yeah. I'd like. I oh, I tried it. Oh, you did. There's no need to try it. Oh, really? It's, it's didn't it's interest you. What it is? It's what okay. you know, it's a game. It seems to be your general feeling of Stadia right now in general. Like yeah, it's, it's, it is what it kind of works yeah. like. With, you yeah. know, let mm -hmm. me know. Yeah, hit me up when you got get some. Borderlands yeah. uh, updated. The current Borderlands, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah that's on. true, man. Borderlands is still, yeah, it's still not, is it? The uh, the full, you know, no. version is still, it's still, it's still what it was in October. It's a time capsule. The Borderlands you play in yeah. Stadia is updated till I think it's October twenty fourth, uh, twenty nineteen. Yeah, yeah. So that's why I don't care as much about the four K gaming <coughs> score on the web because it is about the games, um, some of this other stuff. But the the thing that sticks out to me is it does not give me hope for playing on iPhone anytime soon. It's the same thing, like exactly. That's right? what I'm waiting for. Support that's for additional Android phones and and that's it. No iOS. And it's like, damn, yeah. dude, that's what killed Genesis for me. Dark Siders. Very excited for that game. Got it. Started playing it on the controller with the phone, and it was like the squint of like, oh, I'm sorry, it's just too small. It's already a tiny. And so game, my tablet yeah. is uh, an iPad, and it's yeah. like, okay, well, I'll wait for that to get updated. Yeah, you would play it on your iPad, right? Yeah, exactly. And now we're getting closer and closer and closer to just being on PlayStation Four, and it's like, all right, well. Yep. And then uh, X Cloud will will be around before we up. know it, and Throw it's going to be interesting when you think about this too, because by E3 we should know not the Xbox Series X lineup. We should know a lot more <laughs> about X Cloud and. Uh, 
you know, meaning these titles will be hitting just after that wave of announcement. I think at E three is like when they throw the switch for, for X Cloud, where it's like, here's what's happening with Xbox Series. Well, actually, you'll save that to the end. You'll start with some Xbox Series X stuff. Let's talk about all the other things that are happening. A lot of exciting. You know, earlier the, last year we talked about the fact that coming to X Cloud this year would be we'd expand the beta to everybody, and you'd be able to, or you'd be able to, or we, we'd expand the beta to more people, and you'd be able to use it with your existing games library and uh, Xbox Game Pass. We're happy to announce that starting today, you'll be able to do all that hmm. stuff and get you into the. Yeah. That's a great way to do it. Of like, hey, I'm excited totally. about what you're talking about with Series X, and I want to get into that Xbox ecosystem. Yeah. Do you think that Microsoft is going to hold its cards until E3? You know, we're going to get a PlayStation 5 reveal, no doubt, in a month or so, right? Probably. Uh, I don't know. And, this is the conversation we keep talking about. Yeah. Yeah. But let's assume that we get another February you, PlayStation I, event. Do you think Microsoft would hold its cards all the way till E3? Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because I just feel like. First off, I am not confident in February for so for a PS5. Really, I, I think they've done what they do. look. Go back and watch the February reveal for PlayStation Four, and it's it's Mark Cerny on stage talking about no, I know it's GPUs super used in this thing and how they and it's like all that's they've already cool. done a lot. Of it this was too. cool information, but that's what these Wired articles have done. Yeah. So it's like why would you um, why would you in February reveal the name and the library and the system and the box and the whatever? I think you let it get closer, and that's why I think on PS I love you. I was talking about May. I was like, let it get closer, steal the thunder of E3 before it gets there, and then because you can't go after that, you have to have it out by then. February could still happen. I just don't I, know. I believe that it could happen in February, March because of the fiscal year stuff. Um, oh, that's good right. One. They mm -hmm. they traditionally that's why it's happened for. I believe you know, a big part of it is Switch happened in you know February, and it's it's because the fiscal year ends at the end of March for these companies, and they need a big boost sure. for investors sure. usually um and so who doesn't want to see that bottom line yeah swallow? so I, I do think there's a very good chance and i also think like they you know as a counterpoint even though what you said makes a ton of sense sure they revealed a lot of stuff already in wire but that was because they realized that's not for the stage yeah and now maybe they've set the stage in a better way to be like just like they did at that one e3 for the first time they're like let's look at the games <laughs> and maybe we're going to see, you know, more a, a meat. Big, a big part of it, I think comes down to what they were talking about of that. You know, they don't want to do E3 this year. They want to do hundreds of consumer shows and all this different stuff. Yeah. If, if they're, if that's not lip service, if that is a hundred percent true, then it would make sense in February to be like, guess what, everybody? Here's a PlayStation 5. Here's what some of the games look like. Here's what the price points are. You can see them starting next month in the PlayStation Road to Greatness trailer thing that's going yeah. on in the world. We're doing this thing over. You know, We're going to be at Paris I, Game. We're going to do this thing. Right. I would be surprised if PS5 was as big a part of that roadmap, though. Like, Me it too. It probably is like... You know, the trailers, like you're saying, playing and there's marketing material, but like it's just more PS4 stuff. I, up that in. is 100% what I think yeah. it would be. That's why I just don't think the February thing makes sense to show your cards that early and then have this vacuum of anything happening until then. Maybe. I do. But then that's where I, I wonder I'm like, would Microsoft, are they willing to wait a no, whole half year when all they've showed is, you know, uh, Senua's Sacrifice and then. Um, or Hellblade 2, basically, right? And yeah. then, uh, you know, Halo Infinite. They just haven't shown a lot. Well, we'll see. We will. Uh, number five, a final short one for you. If you're, uh, This is when I thought it might be a lighter news day than it was. Uh, <laughs> there's a Narcos mobile game coming if you like the Narcos Netflix show. Tilting Point has partnered with Galant uh, and game developer Big Wolf Games to launch a new indie clicker mobile game, Narcos Idol Cartel, based on the highly popular American crime drama Narcos. In Narcos Idol Cartel, players will be introduced to the dangerous world of the cartels alongside protagonists who inherited a dangerous family business and are confronted with the difficult choice of keeping their hands clean or doing Doing whatever it takes to survive. Co-developed by Tilting Point and Big Wolf Games, the game will be available on iOS and Android devices in 2020. In Narcos, Idol Cartel players will become part of the Narcos story as they live out new narratives inspired by the hit show. Players will build and improve their own cartel operation from the ground up while competing against others in, or each other I should say, in limited time events to earn special rewards and favors from the legendary El Patron uh, and <laughs> other figureheads who will keep the, or will help the business grow the empire. The game is currently available for pre-registration on Google Play and will launch globally on iOS and Android devices in 2020. Someone in the chat said, make Nick review it. I just like, it's just like, he I didn't wa yeah, he loved Narcos. I, I, I don't know much about Narcos. I, it's a very serious show, whatever. So it's just when they're like, they're going to launch, oh, there's a Narcos game coming to launch a new idle clicker mobile game. Man, nothing gets me more excited. I love the genre of idle clicker mobile game. <laughs> Using the term idle in your genre description. Yeah, and in the, and in the title of the game. Nyko, Narcos, Idle Cartel. 
So you're sitting around. Whatever. G God bless you. Go get him. People love that Simpsons tapped out. I assume that's what this is. I don't know. Fran, I don't want to know. I want to play games that come to other consoles. But this one's in other games in PS5. And they're so far away. Where's Dreams? Where's Patapot 2? Don't get me started. If I want to know what came to the mom and grab shops today, where would I go? Greg, the official list of upcoming software across each and every platform, as listed by the Kind of Funny Games Daily Show host each and every weekday. Do, 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 yeah. Today's games are brought to you by patreon.com slash kind of funny, where you can get the show ad free. And speaking of ads, let's talk about the sponsors for the day. We're going to start with Upstart. Between hitting the gym, eating cleaner, and learning a new skill, there's a lot of ways you can better yourself in the new year. But I can't think of one that's more important than starting the year off by tackling high interest credit card debt. My friends at upstart.com are here to help. Upstart is the revolutionary lending platform that offers smarter rates to help you pay off high interest credit card debt. Upstart goes beyond the traditional credit score when assessing your credit worthiness. They actually reward you based on your education and job history in the form of a smarter rate. Upstart believes that you're more than just a credit score. They believe in you. They make it fast, simple, and easy to check your credit rate. <laughs> oh, wow. Since it's just a soft pull, it won't affect your credit score. The hard pull happens when you accept your rate. The best part, once the loan is approved and accepted, most people get their funds the very next business day. The next day! Over 400,000 people have used Upstart to pay off credit cards and meet their financial goals. Free yourself from the burden of high-interest credit card debt by consolidating everything into one monthly payment with Upstart. See why Upstart is ranked number one in their category with over 300 businesses on Trustpilot. And hurry to upstart.com slash kfgames to find out how low your Upstart rate is. Checking your rate takes only a few minutes. That's upstart.com slash kfgames. Hurry to upstart.com slash kfgames to find out how low your upstart rate is. Next is Hims. You've heard us talk about Hims for a long time, and you know why there's a problem out there. 66% of men start to lose their hair by the age of 35, and once you start to notice it, it can be too late. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for you to be like Nick Scarpino and Andy Cortez. They noticed their thinning hair, and they went to 4 the one-stop shop for sexual wellness, for baldness cures, for a million different things to help you. Uh, you go there, you talk to a doctor, the doctor talks to you, they decide if you're right for the prescription medication, they prescribe it to you if you are right, and guess what? You're on the way to a better hairline. No more awkward in-person doctor visits or long pharmacy lines. 4 connects you with real doctors online, which can save you hours completely confidentially and discreetly. You answer a few quick questions, the doctor reviews, and if it's right for you, they can prescribe you medication to treat hair loss that is shipped directly to your do door. Try Hims by starting out with a free online visit. Go to 4 slash games daily. That's F-O-R-H-I-M-S dot com slash games daily. 4 slash games daily. Prescription products are subject to doctor's approval and require an online consultation with a physician who will determine if the prescription is appropriate. See the website for full details and safety information. This could cost hundreds if you went to a doctor or pharmacy online uh, or pharmacy. Uh, remember, that's 4 slash games daily. And finally, it's Quip. Quip makers of the electric quip, tw quip quip makers of the Quip electric toothbrush want you to know there's one single discovery that matters most to your dental care. It's simply this: if you have good habits, you're good. That means brushing for two minutes twice a day and flossing regularly, no matter what brand you use. Quip makes that simple, starting with an electric toothbrush, refillable floss, and anti-cavity tooth toothpaste. Quip's electric brush has sensitive sonic vibrations with a built-in timer and 30-second pulses that guide for a full and even clean. The Quip floss dispenser comes with pre-marked string to help you use just enough, plus Quip deliver <laughs> delivers fresh brush heads, floss, and toothpaste refills to your door every three months with free shipping, so your routine, routine is always right. Join over 3 million healthy mouths and get Quip today, starting at $25. And if you go to getquip.com slash games right now, you'll get your first refill free. That's your first refill free at getquip.com slash games. Uh, G-E-T-Q-U-I-P dot com slash games. Quip, the good habits company. Fran, you got good habits? Yes, I do. Okay, hold on. I, know, Breaking I, was, news. I was looking at this too, so I was like, are we going to talk <laughs> about this? Breaking news here from Jason Schreier. You can throw it up if you want. Uh, okay, time for some good news. Sony's PlayStation 4 exclusive, Horizon Zero Dawn, is coming to PC this year, sources tell Kotaku. It's an unprecedented move that may help usher in a platform agnostic future. Uh, Jason Frischreier, Kotaku, with this breaking stuff. Yep. Uh, the PlayStation 4 exclusive, Horizon Zero Dawn, will come to our personal computers this year, sources tell Kotaku. It's an unprecedented move that Sony signals a future in which the publisher releases games on platforms beyond its own consoles. 
This news comes from three people familiar with Sony's plans, all speaking anonymously because they were not authorized to talk to press. Sony did not immediately respond to a request for comment. Uh, we, Horizon Zero Dawn is an open world set in a possible You all know this. Yeah, it's, it's fucking amazing. Of... You should have played it. Not like this blessing kid who just played it. Pissing me off. You know what I mean? Yeah, so it's funny. We talked about this earlier this year. Uh, I think I had said I thought it seemed very likely um, other than just figuring out what Sony's strategy is. But like the engine already was being worked on, you know, for Death Stranding, yeah. um, which is coming out later this summer or whatever. And I was like, yeah, like, why wouldn't you it, like the work's being done? Like, why not start doing this as well? And Horizon's been out for a long time, too. So it will be interesting, though, because you would also assume that Horizon Zero Dawn is coming as some cross gen remastered thing to PS5. No right? way, baby. No, uh, the, the, Horizon, the, the, Horizon two. 2, yeah, PlayStation well, Five launch. But game. why wouldn't you do both? Because I feel the same way about Last of Us too. I think I think it would be that I this would be the idea. I think you would do. Um, you know what I mean? I would get it on a PC and get it you playing on that and talking about it, so that when it gets announced for PlayStation Keep Five, it, you want to go buy your right. PlayStation Five. And it, it, it's different, right? Because it wasn't like The Last of Us Two launched with the PS4. Yeah, it was The Last of Us One came out right before the PS4, so they decided it would be a good remaster because not yeah. maybe not a lot of people played it. Well, if, maybe, you, if they're already ramping up for Horizon Two, I think coming out with a remaster right around the same time is like a weird choice, especially because. I, PS5 games will be able to play PS4 game, PS4 discs at, at least, so or something like that, something with backwards compatible. It's backwards so. compatible. Yeah, 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 it's true. Like, is it worth it to invest that additional work to make it work on PS5? I don't know. I, I think it makes a nice pack of like, hey, like play the original and play the new one, um, and natively on PS5, not just like go grab the old one, which um, just you know, it's not going to look anywhere near what the PC version is going to look like, I would assume. So, But super exciting, man. I'm. Uh, it's funny. I played uh, hours of this, and I was like, I got to get back to it. And I forget. There was just a bunch of stuff happening. At the uh, time. Zelda Switch, everything else was happening. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I never got back to it. And now this is fantastic. Been, I've been thinking about playing it earlier this year, and I'm like, maybe I'll wait. Fantastic. Game. So I, think it's a good move. I hope it, I hope it points to Horizon Two coming Super with excited. PlayStation Five as a launch title. I think that'd be amazing. Uh, that's really cool. When will it be out? That'll be the next question. I don't know. So we're gonna go to a list of whatever the fuck I call. Out today. Any games that are out. GTA Online uh, is getting an update. The latest sports car to hit the su Southern San Andreas Super Autos inventory debuts today, alongside a variety of new bonuses and discounts, including double rewards in all Rockstar created King of the Hill and Land races, Diamond Casino Casino Heist finale payout boost. 25% off arcade properties, game cabinets, and more. A long way down is on Steam today. Uh, Pascal's Wager is now available for iOS via the Apple App, App Store. Self is on PC and Mac. Uh, I already said that one. Uh, Super Crush KO comes to Switch and PC. Uh, Regina and Mac comes to Wii U. Uh, Ma Meitesu. Pure Station, PlayStation 4 and Switch. Sorry, James, Switch. Stories Untold, Switch. Uh, the Alliance Alive HD Remastered on PC. To the Moon on Switch. Jurassic Excite on Switch. Anime Studio on Switch. Dreamwalker Never Fall Asleep on Switch. Doggy Ninja The Burning Strikers on Switch. Uh, Formida on PC and Mac. Solitaire Call of Heroes on PC and Mac. Then Sea of Thieves First Three... First free monthly content update of the decade. Legends of the Sea is now live for all players across <laughs> Xbox One, uh, Windows 10 PC, and Xbox Game Pass. Of the decade. I love it. Legends of the Sea shines a spotlight on player immortalizations, sends adventurers in search of all new Reaper's chests, and introduces a fresh yet familiar face. New dates for you. Uh, Terraforming Earth, the innovative side-scrolling roguelike light Platform, puzzle platformer set in a future where mankind is extinct will be released on Switch on January 30th. Metal Unit fires a salvo on Steam, on Steam February 4th. Oh, sorry, I read that wrong. Never mind. I thought you said it. Never, I screwed that. It's up. Metal Unit, and then they did the little quip, and I just took it in the headline. Metal Unit. Oh, is sorry, on Steam. no, maybe you did say it. Uh, Terraforming Earth is on Steam on January 30th. I think you said Switch. My bad. Maybe I misheard everybody. We're all being clear. Ter you terraform the Earth on Steam. No big deal. Uh, the second chapter of Guild Wars 2's continuing saga, the Ice Brood Saga, arrives Tuesday, January 28th. Load Runner Legacy, the latest edition of the cult classic Load Runner series, will launch on PlayStation 4 January 29th, 2020. And then Deep Silver Today announces that Metro, the Metro series is coming to the Nintendo Switch on February 28th, 2020. The physical retail version contains the first two entries of the Metro series, Metro 2033 and Metro Last Light, on one 16-gigabyte cart. Folks can receive special pre-order bonuses with the Ranger Cash pre-order pack at select retailers, it's GameStop, or choose uh, to go digital and download each title individually. 
deal of the day for you. A Long Way Out, as we said, is out today on Steam, but there's a 10% discount and a new trailer if you don't know what we're talking about and want to go check it out. For Animal. Yes, sir. Usually we jump to reader mail here, but we peppered it's, it in throughout the show. Been, we did yeah, such a good guy. Show too. Yeah, yeah. It's been a tight one, yeah. Don't worry. We, we have some more questions, though, for that there post show we'll be doing. So if you want to hear Fran talk about some puzzles and then answer some stuff about this show, it's coming up. <laughs> Serious, these are real questions. Uh, time to squat up, though. Uh, squat up, of course, is where you write into patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames. You give me your username, platform of choice, and why you need help in a video game. I read to hear the best friends come and find you and play with you together. Today, Robert Mims needs help on Xbox. Robert Mims's Xbox name is Robert Mims. R-O-B-E-R-T-M-I-M-M-S. Robert Mims say, says, come play Tekken with me. If you want to play Tekken with Robert Mims, hit up Robert Mims on Xbox. Heck yeah. Uh, time for your wrong, Fran. We ask people watching live on twitch.tv slash kindoffunnygames to go to kindoffunny.com slash you're wrong and tell us what we screw up as we screw it up. So we can set the record straight for everybody watching later on youtube.com slash kindoffunnygames, roosterteeth.com, podcast services around the globe. Uh, Kebabs writes in and goes, mm, In Kakarot, Goku's original Saiyan name is Gobon. Has all the blah, blah, Gobon has not. Fucking uh, nerd! 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 Get out of here! They're streaming your, your Gokus and your Bogus over there tonight. <laughs> Don't talk to me about anime Andy's unless it's My Hero Academia. Sure. Or the Ghostbusters Alchemist, manga. Uh, Brotherhood. Remember when I wrote the Ghostbusters Piece. Mamba? Yeah, I remember the Ghostbusters Mamba. <laughs> uh, Woody says, according to Jason Schreier, employees of CD Projekt Red have told stories of a culture of crunch in which employees felt pressure to work extensive mm. overtime. Director Adam Badowski promised that Cyberpunk 2077's final hours would be less crunchy than The Witcher 3's. Oh, I do remember that now. Uh, well, it could be trouble. Well, no, I mean, he, I mean, he yeah, promised they, it wouldn't they be. They said so. they wouldn't, but meaning they are. They obviously have been working very hard, and now they got another yeah. six months figured out, but like they're at least they're aware of the issue and hopefully working on it. Uh, D.H. Ruvenator writes in and says, On Bleeding Edge, it will not be delayed, Greg. The date has been officially announced with a physical box and pricing of $30 shared just yesterday by Microsoft. So hyped. We will see. But you're probably yeah, right. Yeah, that, do that doesn't mean anything. Just because it has physical stuff? I mean, it, I think you wouldn't have done that right away right now, but then what, Last of Us did a whole fucking reveal of their release date and then like a week later pushed it back. Yep. Um, Nick Schreiber says, Isabel is a me gunner costume in Smash Ultimate. <coughs> uh, Nicholas Richter mm. says, there is both an Isabel and King K. Rule me fighter costume in Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. Each costume had been previously available as DLC for Smash Brothers Wii U. Right. I stand corrected. People keep adding other stuff, so yeah, it happens. Um... Wait, they said for Wii U, though. No, they say in Smash Ultimate, but it was also for oh, Wii U. Oh, it was U on both. Doing. I see. Yeah, I'm stopping there. All right. Oh, uh, we have a post show to do. I forgot how you do that. that. How I forgot how you do everything. the end of the show now? Well, no, I was going to I was gonna sign off, and I still am, but I was like, oh, shit, I still have my notes. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been Kind of Funny Games Daily. Remember, each and every week, day on a variety of platforms, we run you. To the nerdy news you need to know about. If you like that, love what we do, and enjoy the show, we urge you, especially during this month of January, while we fundraise, to go to patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames. Yeah, of course, each and every day, you can go there to get the show ad-free, along with that bonus post show. It's a very good deal, and it helps us keep the lights on and the mics going. Uh, Fran, where can people keep up with you? You can catch me on Twitch TV slash FM3 underscore. Thanks, everybody who has supported me over there. I love streaming and love to see your faces. Uh, in there. Set those live notifications so you're going to go live. Do it. Oh, reminder about the Epic Game Store, too. <laughs> Fran Mirabella, creator code. There it Use is. Use it if you're on the store. Great way to support. Uh, we're going to answer some more of your questions in that post show that you submitted at patreon.com slash kindoffunnygames because you should go there and do all sorts of stuff there. But until next time, for everybody else, it's been our pleasure to serve you.